We approached this project not as a restoration, but as a preservation. We wanted to respect it like a ruin of Rome, where we knew that we couldn't bring it back to its original glory, but we could save what was here and enjoy what was here from a you know, deconstructed sense. The inspiration for this project really was the building itself. The fact that it survived 100 years, left abandoned, survived a hit with dynamite in the 1930s, the fact that it didn't topple into itself really made us respect the old walls. And as we investigated further, the quality of the build and finding out how good the concrete was, how good the masonry was, just really wanted us to respect the old structure and craftsmanship. The thing I'm most proud of about this project would probably be making it accessible to everyone. We worked really hard to make sure that it was handicap, ADA compliant, and safe for all ages. The community response to our project has been fantastic. Tourists, people coming through town, locals alike, everyone's been really uh, warm and receptive to what we've done. As a preservationist, traditionally we, we want to look at pretty architecture and say this is why this place is worthy of preservation. But in East Harlem, the reason why it's worthy of preservation is not because it's beautiful, but because it provides lessons for how we go forward. We started this project in June of 2021 by pretty much walking every single block in the survey area. It's 90 blocks. 1,600 parcels, individual building parcels. But what made it manageable is the fact that we knew we weren't looking at an architectural assessment in the traditional sense that most building surveys are. This is really more about understanding how the community exists within the built landscape. The goal of this study was not to deliver definitive preservation action. It was more of to lay the groundwork for an ongoing dialogue within the community about what is worthy of preservation, what is significant about the place, and what is, defines the culture of the place. Instead of outlining, you know, just outlining a bunch of buildings, uh, it identified broad themes in education, in housing policy, in faith, in the arts, and how that is reflected in the built landscape. Its heritage is very apparent. It's not hidden in the walls of the buildings. So really this report was about understanding how the built landscape sustains that heritage and how preservation might service it. My name's John Oster and we are in Rochester, New York. Historic preservation is about a third of our business. They tend to be buildings that were originally built for a reason that has disappeared. And so they tend to sit and they become wasting assets for their, for their communities. When we are able to do what we do successfully, they become essentially the pride and joy of their communities. And that's, that's been our experience all over upstate New York. Historic preservation and affordable housing are mutually uh, reinforcing. The scope of work that we have to do in older buildings to prepare them for residential use is often quite elaborate and quite expensive. And so the addition of the historic overlay usually ends up working to benefit not only the scope of work, but the financing plan that's inherent in affordable housing projects. I feel a sense of accomplishment. I feel like we collectively have done something that provides the residents with a very high quality living experience. And uh, there's almost nothing I can think of that's more important than that.
My name is Steve Jordan, and for the last 20 years or so, I have uh, repaired and restored windows in uh, central and western New York. I grew up in rural West Tennessee. There seemed to be an underappreciation for old houses and nice downtown districts. And, and as a young man, I saw the houses go down one by one, either by neglect or, or fire or remodeling. I was aware from my jobs that there was a need for people to repair windows. So I started doing small window repair jobs and it just snowballed until I could barely answer the, all the phone calls. So that, that's how I, I kind of stumbled into it. I hope my legacy will be someone who worked tirelessly to promote historic preservation, it's especially I hope in rural communities that are suffering so much today. But I hope my legacy will also be through, through my books, by, by training future or budding preservation trades people, okay? I think that'll be my legacy. People know me for that. They say things like, he's the guy that wrote the book. We're here at the Little Theater in downtown Rochester. Uh, it's America's oldest art house cinema. When I walk into the space every day, it's uh, the same feeling. It's just great pride in what we've done here and accomplished here. There, there always are gonna be these challenges and setbacks and it's more about how you sort of can creatively and collaboratively address those and keep moving forward for the benefit of both our clients, but also the benefit of these wonderful historic buildings that um, are parts of our community. It, it's just, still blows me away every day at the, the beauty, the details. Such a magnificent job that, you know, I, I get to oversee every day and experience with people, new people that are uh, enjoying it. I think one of the more meaningful pieces of feedback that I remember hearing from a patron when they got to see this, uh, the project complete, they remarked that um, they had never experienced what it meant um, to be in a place rather than a space until they came to the refreshed a little. So when I walk into the building, I'm awed, I guess, by the investment that our forefathers made in this property back in the 1880s. The amount of care and detail that's gone into the place is really awe-inspiring. So we did a 74 7-Eleven special permit, which is a permit that allows us to sell our air rights, but a portion of those, uh, the sale proceeds, needs to be invested back into the landmark building. Half of the money that we received from the sale had to go back into the facade of the building. And, um, and so that was the, the predominant way that the building uh, was gonna be preserved. And then a portion of what remained after that, we're gonna spend on the inside to do a major uh, restoration, make the building accessible, which will further enhance its ability to be a community asset. The greatest impact that this project uh, now has is that the building facade has been restored to a, a level that probably doesn't need any significant work for at least another 50 years. And that's the burden that's been lifted from this congregation that as it ages and we go through intergenerational transformation. We want to continue to open the building up for community use and so we can build those bridges and, and hopefully intersect with more of our community members. I mean, it's always a joy to walk into this theater. 
Even though there wasn't much light, um, I could tell when I first came in with the ceiling in bad shape or whatever that this place was pretty spectacular. Um, for a small town, you know, away from the big city uh, kind of theater, it was very, very unexpected. When the project was completed, the thing that I was the most proud was the attention to the details, the uh, plaster work and the uh, decorative painting. Um, it turned out so well. Everyone was willing to kind of go that extra length to make sure that things were preserved, they were repaired properly, and they were treated in such a way that uh, we really came back to what we think that it, it originally was. I think any historic property is worth saving. It's definitely a uh, look to the past and a reminder of what Gowanda was. And I think that it's gonna be a big part of what Gowanda you know, is gonna be in the, in the future. Fundamental to our mission is preservation, preservation of our 2,000 acre historic site, preservation of our historic structures, including the fort walls and the buildings, as well as additional structures such as this 1826 pavilion. So truly in this whole structure, what we realized was all the layers of Ticonderoga's story going back to the 17th, 18th, of course, 19th and 20th centuries, we have encapsulated in this building, which is just so remarkable and just so important and uh, quite special that we're able to share that with people. This beautiful space um, will not only, and has not only with the restoration project, saved a national treasure. And of course that commitment and investment is ongoing, uh, but it has positioned Fort Ticonderoga for a really vibrant future, expanding our audiences, offering different experiences to our visitors, and really becoming such a critical part of the Fort Ticonderoga experience. Preservation uh, is absolutely economic development at its best. And we know from data that people who visit these kinds of places actually spend more money uh, when they visit those communities than other types of tourism. So we're thrilled to be a major economic driver uh, for the region and New York State. Preservation is, is a one-time opportunity to save our history and once a building is torn down or let deteriorated beyond restoration, it's gone. For the community, um, it, it now is a, a source of pride where it once was exactly the opposite, taking the building from a, a really an eyesore uh, and a hazard to something that is a functional, useful, accurately restored historic building. We've had, by recorded data, over 45 people that have been involved in the project and over 15,000 uh, person hours involved. So it was actually fairly easy to recruit people or to encourage people to come and, and do whatever they can. We certainly hope that this building and this project will last for Many, many generations. Uh, it's a fine, sturdy building now. All it needs, like any building, is continued maintenance and usage. We want it to become more and more a part of the community. And I think a, a symbol to the community that buildings can be restored. They don't have to be torn down. I think this building in particular was sort of a turning point for the community. 
I like to describe it as sort of planting a flag on the lunar surface, you know? Here we were saying with this one, you know what? Our historic downtown matters and uh, we're gonna do something about it. You know, when I walk in in the morning, there's uh, already a buzz of activity and we're nowhere near open. There's a whole crew here working and they're putting their heart and soul into making some of the best food in the area. So our tagline at Arts Cafe is save a building, build a community. And for us, it was very literally that. This project started as a sort of glorified hole in the ground and we wanted to both save this building and the neighboring buildings and in the process strengthen our community and bring people together. Historic preservation and renovation focuses on bricks and mortar, but at the end of the day, it's about the human aspect. And it's been really fascinating to see how this project has brought people together. That's been really rewarding. And even though we planned it, it's just been surprising to see it happen in, in real time. You know, pr pretty remarkable.